Let's move ahead with the pore pressure issues. Let's consider an undrained condition that means there is a porous rock and there is fluid inside. We are further considering that the pore space is completely saturated and in this case assume that on the rock there is a compressive pressure delta capital P applied or in other word delta capital P is a change in the compressive pressure. The fluid exerts a pore pressure and the change is delta small p. Now generally speaking delta small p lies between 0 to delta capital P. Equal to 0 means a condition when the, there is no pore pressure actually. One possibility is that the pore space is filled with gas and which is exerting very little pressure or there is no fluid present at all. What if this is true? Delta small p is less than delta capital P. I have said that delta capital P is a compressive stress and is being counteracted by delta small p. So, as a result of this situation, there is a net compression given by delta capital P minus delta small p which is a net compression. Delta small p is equal to delta capital P. Delta small p equal to delta capital P. That means some compressive stress delta P has been applied and same amount of delta small p is applied. So, the zero net stress Effectively speaking, the body is not compressed or extended. And Skempton found a relation between sm delta small p and delta capital P. This relation was put forward. Therefore, delta small p is proportional to delta capital P. Now, this Skempton coefficient capital B we can think that it varies from 0 to 1 usually. What does this mean? B equal to 0 means if I put B equal to 0 that means delta small p equal to 0 that means no pore pressure is present under the conditions which I have already said. And B equal to 1 means delta capital P is equal to delta small p that means the extensional stress given by the pore pressure and the compressional stress applied delta P they counterbalance each other no net stress is produced. Now interestingly there are cases where B is more than 1. What does this mean? B more than 1 means that delta small p in some cases be more than delta capital P. Imagine a situation 7 unit of compressive stress is applied what I mean as delta capital P and here the pore pressure exerted is 9 unit which is delta small p and as you see delta small p is more than delta capital P. So, in this case although an external compressional stress is or pressure is applied, there is a net extensional stress that is produced. B more than 1 will lead to net extensional stress. Now, B more than 1 is probably not possible in the geological cases. Okay. Now, let us move forward from this delta small p equal to capital B delta capital P. What was described in a simple way we want to see in 2D and 3D cases how things change. This delta capital P can be represented 
in a triaxial stress regime as minus sigma xx plus sigma yy plus sigma zz divided by 3. What it means? Think of a cube and take this as the x direction, y direction and the z direction which are perpendicular to each other. Now here think of three normal stresses acting on the three surfaces. This is sigma xx, this is sigma yy and this is sigma zz. How to write these two suffixes I have already described while talking about the second rank tensors. Since sigma xx is acting towards the negative side of x axis and so also sigma yy acting towards the y direction of the coordinate system and sigma zz acting towards the negative side direction of z axis, these magnitudes are to be taken as negative. So therefore this minus sign has come. The arithmetic mean of these three normal stresses is being done here and this delta capital P actually becomes this in case of a three dimensional situation or consider a two dimensional case, consider a square and there are two directions of action of the stresses. Here say this is sigma xx and this is sigma yy. So here sigma zz is not there. So what is the arithmetic mean in this case? Delta capital P becomes sigma xx plus sigma yy divided by 2 and here is a minus symbol given. Why this minus? Because again if we think of the x and y axis, say this is the x axis and this is the y axis, sigma xx is, XX is acting towards the negative side of the x axis, sigma yy is acting towards the negative side of the y axis. So the compressive stresses have been given by this symbol. So what is this? This is the arithmetic mean of the applied stresses. Interestingly, in this two dimensional case, what I wrote earlier as delta small p equal to b delta capital P, the expression changes to delta small p equal to 2b multiplied by 1 plus vu divided by 3 and then multiplied by delta capital P. This vu term which is coming is the undrained Poisson's ratio. It is defined in this way. And here u stands for the undrained condition. If someone writes Vd, that means this is the Poisson's ratio for the drained condition. which is not the case. Here we are dealing with Vu. So if the B and Vu are constants, then again we can write delta small p is proportional to delta capital P. Note here, as I told earlier, delta small p is proportional to delta capital P. So what becomes the proportionality constant becomes important. Now I will take a case where when the deformation is allowed in only one direction. So sigma xx and that is, is equal to minus delta p. What is the situation? Just think of this surface and a compressive stress has acted sigma xx. I take this as axis x and say this is the lower value and that is the higher value. So we see that this compressive stress is going towards the negative side of the x axis which can be here. So we have taken a minus symbol over there. In this case delta small p is equal to b multiplied by 1 plus vu divided by 3 and then multiplied by 1 minus vu and then here multiplied by delta capital P. This relationship is true. And in this case what is given inside the second bracket is called the tidal efficiency represented by gamma Te. So from here we can say that the gamma Te is equal to delta 
small p divided by delta capital P which is written over here and the expression within the second bracket can be proved to be equal to 4b multiplied by ku divided by 4g plus 3ku recollect g is a symbol we have earlier used for shear modulus same thing here ku u stands for undrained so bulk modulus for the undrained condition now my question to the viewer is once you see 4b ku divided by 4g plus 3ku do you find any resemblance with any of the expression for the isotropic solids? In a matrix format, I have demonstrated in three-dimensional case how the Hooke's law can be presented. If you look at those lectures, you will find probably similar expressions and it will be important to compare. Let us see the bulk modulus K2 when we are thinking in terms of the VP that means the pore volume in that respect. K2 is equal to the effective pressure change delta P dash and then divide by the volume change per unit volume. Let us look at K3 another kind of bulk modulus where we are dealing with F that means the fluid present inside the pore space is given by minus delta P this small p indicates the pore pressure and this change divided by change in Vf divided by or the per unit original volume of the considered material. Now again come back to the very basic equation delta P minus delta small p is equal to the effective pressure change. So, we can write delta P equal to delta P dash plus delta P. So, from here what we can do? we can find out this expression and we can find out this expression and if we add up in this way we get delta capital P is equal to minus K2 plus K3 multiplied by delta Vp divided by V. Here there was Vp and Vf but it has become here Vp. Why it is so? Because the volume of pore space is equal to actually the volume of the fluid which is present. So, therefore, the change in these volumes will be like this. We are considering that the fluid is completely saturating the pore space. Only in that case, this is true. Now, what we will do is delta small p which is over here divided by delta capital P which is this. If we do, we find out K3 divided by K2 plus K3. K2 plus K3 can be called as K4. So, this becomes our another interesting relationship. Delta small p the pore pressure change divided by delta p the pressure change that is applied is given by the ratio of the bulk modulus. When we are writing repeatedly that delta p dash is equal to delta p minus delta small p note that this was found by Terzaghi and it was based on the lab experiment and intuition. However, another researcher Philanger found from the mixture theory that delta P dash is equal to delta P minus up to this is all the same, but then phi multiplied by delta P where phi is the porosity. So, it creates a confusion which one to take in long run whether this one or that one and several authors have considered this to be inaccurate and they have picked up this equation. So, in this work we are following this equation and when we dealt with the Mohr circle and how the pore pressure related change happens we have used this equation. We have not used this equation coming from the mixture theory. Let us look at few other things. When we write delta small p the pore pressure change is equal to b a coefficient multiplied by delta capital P. Delta capital P is the applied stress. If delta p's magnitude goes closer to delta capital P in that case naturally B goes closer to 1 and this is the case for soil consolidation covered by Terzaghi in his work. We can also think that delta small p going closer to 0 in that case naturally B goes closer to 0. This is the case when a gas is filling up the pore space because in case of gas the Kf the bulk modulus 
I can write here Kg basically G for gas is very low. Now let's look at the effective stress for the volumetric deformation. Delta V is the change in volume and V capital V is the initial volume of the entire rock and the fluid system considered together. Note that delta V in some book has been called as dilation in the engineering books whereas in structural geology books delta V divided by V which is unitless has been considered as dilation. Anyway delta V divided by V we will write as minus 1 divided by K, K is the bulk modulus and here would be the pressure change. Earlier we could have written like this delta V by V is equal to minus 1 by K and then delta P. In fact, in this way the bulk modulus is defined pressure change divided by change in volume per unit original volume. So, here the change that takes place in the theory of poroelasticity is that this delta P term is changed by delta capital P and then minus alpha multiplied by delta small p. Here we consider K as the drain bulk modulus and alpha is the effective stress coefficient. Let us call it equation M and from here we can write change in volume, change in volume per unit original volume delta V divided by V is equal to minus 1 by K as it is and then this term is basically the change in effective pressure. So, this is minus delta P dash. Now, back to this equation this delta capital P can be replaced by delta P dash and delta small p. In what way? Because we know this relation delta capital P equal to delta P dash plus del delta small p. So, if that is being done we find change in volume per unit original volume is equal to minus 1 divided by k as it is and then here a change happens which is delta P dash effective pressure change plus 1 minus alpha. Alpha is the effective stress coefficient. Now here if we consider that delta P dash is equal to 0. That means we are thinking delta capital P equal to delta small p. Under what situation it is possible? It is possible when a weak matrix is saturated by H2O only water. So, the water is giving a pressure which is just balancing the applied external stress. In that case what happens? This delta P dash becomes 0 and the expression simplifies to change in volume per unit original volume which is written over here is equal to minus 1 divided by k over there. This term becomes 0 1 minus alpha multiplied by delta P that is what is stated. Now, if we take k and alpha as constants then we can say that this dilation is proportional to delta small p that means dilation is proportional to the pore pressure. Let us look into a case when the shape of the solid and that of the pore space remains intact what kind of relationship is obtained in the volume change per unit original volume, the change in volume of the pore space per unit original pore space this was S so solid component and the total change in volume per unit volume. Let us try to understand we will come to this equation but let us try to understand what it means. For that I have taken a very simple case a circle and then I have drawn a square in this way. This side is tangent to the circle at that point, this side of the square is tangent at that point, this side of the square is tangent at that point of the circle and so also this point. The porosity can be thought in terms of three dimensional approach or we can also take it in two dimension. I am taking in two dimension for easy and quick understanding but this can also be very well be extended in the three dimension case. Consider the radius of the circle is A unit. So, the area of the circle is pi A square unit. If this is A then the total length is 2A. So, that means 
the area of the square is 4a square unit. How much is the pore area in this case? This dash portion are the four pore areas which are not interconnected by the way. But anyway, this total will be equal to area of the square minus the area of the circle which is 4a square minus pi a square which is a square multiplied by 4 minus pi. So the porosity can be defined as the pore area divided by the total area. The total area means 4a square. So a square multiplied by 4 minus pi divided by 4 a square turns out to be 1 minus pi by 4. One obvious observation is that this porosity is not dependent on the a. This porosity phi is not a function a that means the size of the grain. Now suppose you squeeze everything so that this big circle becomes a small circle and then the big square becomes a small square. Will the porosity change? The answer is no because as we see here the porosity is not dependent on the radius of the circle. So by compression if there is no change in shape the circular grain remains circular the pore shapes remain the same and the overall geometry the square remains the same. Size has changed but the shape has not changed. That was the implication of this statement when the shape of the solid and the pore space remains intact during a deformation. So as we found porosity in this case phi does not change I can say by such a compression a big square becomes a small square and a big circle the circular grain becomes a small circular grain the change in porosity delta phi is equal to 0. Now I am going to talk in three dimensional case volume I am bringing I was talking about area if you consider volume then also same thing will same conclusion will come. Here phi porosity is actually the volume of the pore space divided by the total volume Vp divided by V. So from here we can write if phi is equal to Vp divided by V then delta phi is equal to this is going to be the case. Now since I am considering a case delta phi is equal to 0 so I can write here it is equal to 0 since V cannot be 0 so I can say that this term is equal to 0. So from here I can say that V delta Vp is equal to Vp delta V. So from here we can say delta Vp divided by Vp is equal to delta V divided by V. Now once this is understood in case of a deformation where no shape change happens only size change happens we come to this expression now delta Vp by Vp is equal to delta V by V this will hold true. And it is also possible to prove that delta Vs by Vs is equal to delta Vp by Vp or you can prove delta Vs by Vs is equal to delta V by V. So altogether we get delta Vs by Vs equal to delta Vp by Vp equal to delta V by V. This is an important relation if in the poroelasticity work we come across any two of them to be equal that means we are dealing with a case when the shape of the solid and that of the pore space remained intact during the course of deformation. This may be an ideal case also. We will take a different route now to understand when there is a size change involved due to deformation but no shape change happens. Delta Vs by Vs equal to delta Vp by Vp equal to delta V by V. V stands for volume but here I am starting with a two dimensional case where I will be considering area as a representative of volume. Consider a circular grain of radius r and here in this we have drawn a square. So the 
V s volume of the solid is equivalent here to the area of the solid which is pi r square. If r is the radius then the length of the square side is 2 r. So, the total volume of the object or the total area of the square is equal to 4 r square. So, the pore space, where is the pore space? This is the pore space at the 4 places. The total area of these pore spaces or the volume of the pore spaces is equal to 4 r square minus pi r square is equal to r square multiplied by 4 minus pi. Now imagine that due to a deformation the radius is reduced from a bigger radius to a smaller radius and the square changes from a bigger square to a smaller square in a manner that the r is reduced to r divided by a. In that case the changed volume of the solid or the changed area of the circle will be pi multiplied by r square divided by a square. So, the change in V s will be V s dash this equation 4 minus V s given by equation 1. Once that is done we find pi r square multiplied by a to the power minus 2 minus 1. So, from here we can write delta V s divided by V s is equal to pi r square a to the power minus 2 minus 1 divided by pi r square and it comes out to be a to the power minus 2 minus 1. Delta V s by V s we have derived because we were seeing delta V s by V s over here. Now, we are going to find out delta V p by V p and we are going to see that the same expression comes in the right hand side. Same thing will be done with delta V by V. Let us do it. V p is equal to 4 r square minus pi r square which is this expression rewritten over there. Now, what will be the V p dash since r is changed to r divided by a. So, here in place of r I will write r divided by a. So, this becomes instead of r square r square a to the power minus 2 and 4 minus pi remains as it is. So, from this equation 7 and the equation 5 we can write V dash p minus V p which is equal to the delta V p is equal to r square multiplied by a to the power minus 2 then 4 minus pi basically this expression minus r square multiplied by 4 minus pi that expression. So, from here we can take common r square and 4 minus pi once this is taken out what remains is a to the power minus 2 minus 1. So, now if I do delta V p divided by V p. So, from this expression delta V p is equal to this divided by V p 4 r square minus pi r square I get a to the power minus 2 minus 1. So, we find that delta V s by V s is equal to a to the power minus 2 minus 1 and which is same as delta V p by V p. So, these two are equated. We will now see delta V by V. We already know V is equal to 4 R square and now R is replaced by R divided by A. So, V dash is equal to 4 R square divided by A square. So, therefore, delta V, how we are defining this delta all the time? Final value minus the original value V dash minus V 4 R square by A square minus 4 R square if I take 4 r square common a to the power minus 2 minus 1. So, from here I can write delta v divided by v, v was 4 r square. So, what turns out to be a to the power minus 2 minus 1. So, we can see in this equation, in this equation and in this equation that these three ratios are the same. So, this is the other way of proving. It is simple, but particularly for the students this is required.